Often, we have to make the choice between what is right and what we ourselves prefer. And we choose what we like over what is right. However, ultimately, we are accountable for our actions and our deeds before Allah Almighty on the Day of Judgment. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, Perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows while you know not. Allah Almighty is the one who knows the deeper reality and we don't. Despite all the knowledge we have, we are ignorant. Our knowledge is but a drop in the ocean. As Allah says, and of knowledge, you mankind have been given only a little. Sometimes you decide to go somewhere and Allah decides to let you go also. And sometimes you decide to go to a college and Allah gives you admission into that college also. You decide to graduate early and Allah lets you graduate early also. So things go according to your plan. All that means is your plan and Allah's plan was the same for them things. But sometimes your plan and Allah's plan are not the same. Sometimes you want to stay in that job for 10 years, but you get fired after six months. Or sometimes you apply to this college or university and you had the best application, but you still didn't get in. And people with worse application than you got in. And it happens. Allah says in Surah Al-Kahf, Accept when adding, if Allah wills, and remember your Lord when you forget it, and say perhaps my Lord will guide me to what is nearer than this to right conduct. Not everything will go according to our plan. We will still have to make a plan. We still have to put in the effort. But at the end of the day, it is Allah who will decide whether this plan will come through or not. Unfortunate life events happen. Every single day, there is somebody out there dealing with difficult circumstances. We know life isn't all sunshine and roses, but as soon as it's us going through that difficult time, we throw all hope in the bin. Suddenly, life is not fair and why is it always me become our go-to. We unnecessarily search for a reason as to why things are hard before finally landing on self-victimization. Now, I'm not saying you should be jumping for joy whenever things get hard, but victimizing yourself further makes things worse. You have now convinced yourself that the world is out to get you. The world isn't out to get you because it never had a say in your life to begin with. The one who decreed the unfortunate circumstances is none other than the Almighty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned for you to go through that particular situation at that exact time. He had a plan formulated for you before you were born. In fact, Allah decreed everything from the beginning of time until the end. Know you not that Allah knows all that is in the heaven and on the earth? Verily it is all in the book, verily that is easy for Allah. Trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan is vital to your own success in this world. How can I learn to always trust in His plan? Remind yourself of why you believe in Allah. Why have you accepted Islam in your life? What makes you feel connected? Everyone has their own journey into choosing Islam as their way of life. What is your journey? And do you appreciate it enough? Figuring this out is the first step. Now I need you to understand that knowing the origins of your belief means you've already got that trust in Him. For how can you believe without trusting? Remember that no matter what you're going through, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you're able to come out of it stronger. Don't despair or lose all hope. Our prophets, may Allah bless them all, faced difficult obstacles. Trust that you were destined to face this challenge. Trust that you'll become better because of it. Trust that Allah's plan is the journey you're being allowed to take. The journey that ensure your success in this life. One of the most fundamental pillars for Muslims is the concept of tawakkul, which is often defined as trust and reliance in Allah. However, many people misunderstand the concept of tawakkul. They see tawakkul as a passive verbal characteristic which simply involves supplicating to Allah for what we want. However, there's an incident from Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him's life that shows a clear perspective on tawakkul. One day, the messenger of Allah peace be upon him noticed a Bedouin, a desert Arab, leaving his camel without tying it. And he asked the man, why don't you tie down your camel? The Bedouin answered, I put my trust in Allah. The messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, tie your camel first, then put your trust in Allah. From Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him's response, it's obvious that this man didn't understand what trusting Allah was. He thought that tawakkul meant expecting Allah to take care of everything without the person putting forth any effort. The Prophet, peace be upon him's advice, demonstrates trusting Allah. Tawakkul isn't just a verbal and passive trait. Instead, tawakkul is an active trait, meaning that we show Allah our trust by taking action toward what we are trying to accomplish. In other words, we must do our part first with our actions before trusting Allah's divine help will come. To demonstrate true tawakkul, we have to do our part first. For example, even though we believe Allah is the giver of life, al-muhi, and the protector, preserver, guardian, we have to take the necessary health precautions to keep ourselves from falling sick such as washing our hands and exercising. We also believe Allah is the provider, Ar-Razaq, but we still have to go out and put forth the effort to create income. We don't expect money to just fall from the sky. Thus, if you or I are not doing our part, if we're not putting forth effort towards our goals through our actions, then we're not demonstrating true tawakkul. To expound on this point, we only need to look at the life of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Whenever Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him or his companions were faced with any situation, they never sat back and passively trusted Allah to take care of them. Instead, they were proactive about taking care of themselves. And they put their trust in Allah after they did everything they could do with their own actions. To understand the concept of tawakkul, Consider how tense and worried you get at times about the challenges of this worldly life. Whether it's you worrying about losing your job or sustenance or general life problems that you may come to face. Tawakkul is your belief and the attitude that you have about putting your trust in Allah to take care of all of your affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever places his trust in Allah Sufficient is he for him, for Allah will surely accomplish his purpose. For verily, Allah has appointed for all things a due proportion. The Quran makes it clear that tawakkul is not an option, but rather a requirement. Allah may he be exalted, says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, and put your trust in Allah if you are believers indeed. And he also says in Surah Ibrahim, and in Allah let believers put their trust. Tawakkul shouldn't be mistaken with giving up our efforts thinking that somehow your challenges will get resolved. Rather striving and working with the attitude that Allah will take care of your affairs and will help you in getting through your trials is part of you having the tawakkul in Allah. Allah says in Surah Al-Ankabut, so seek provision from Allah and worship Him alone. Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan stated about this verse, 
look for sustenance and do not sit around the masajid claiming that you are putting your trust in Allah. Do not sit in your homes and claim that your daily sustenance will come to you. This is wrong and a true believer doesn't say such things. One of the major benefits of tawakkul is that it can relieve us from unnecessary anxiety, worry and resulting depression from the challenges that we may be facing. By believing that all our affairs are in Allah's hands and we can do only what is in our control, we leave the results to Allah and accept His decree, whatever it may be. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali said, the fruit of tawakkul is the acceptance of Allah's decree. Whoever leaves his affairs to Allah and then is accepting of what he is given has truly relied on Allah. Al-Hasan and others among the Salaf define tawakkul as rida, meaning acceptance. Let's strive to understand the concept of tawakkul and to make it part of our belief systems. We will notice that things will not only get resolved easier with his help, but tawakkul will also relieve us from the day-to-day -day anxieties and worries associated with the challenges of this life.